final day here at the 2024 World Indoor Championships. I mean, if you could choose and you could script how to end off a World Championships, this was exactly how to do it. Again, world records, championship records, national records. I mean, everything across the board was set here on day three in Glasgow, Scotland. And I mean, there were so many performances. I mean, I mean, USA cleaned house. They went crazy today. 11 total medals, two gold, seven silver, as well as two bronze from the distances into the jumps, into the field. Like it was crazy across the board. So we're going to start off with that men's 1500 meters. We're going to kind of try and power through all the great performances that we saw. Men's 1500 meters, Jordy B. Beamish, Cole Hawker, Hobbs Kessler, one, two, three. I mean, this was an amazing race that was super close all the way up to the last 10 meters of the race. But Jordy Beamish literally slingshotted around the curve. And in the last, what, 30 meters coming home, he managed to grab the win, getting it in an amazing, amazing race. But just behind him, Cole Hawker, as well as Hobbs Kessler, were duking it out, fighting for the not only the silver and the bronze position, but in fourth place, they were fighting with Nader, who just edged back behind and we saw Cole Hawker get the silver medal just ahead of Hobbs Kessler. I mean Beamish, Cole Hawker, Hobbs Kessler, they all got on the podium for the first time in their careers. They are all rising. They are all making waves in the sport right now and this was this is really indicative of a lot that's going to be happening when we go outdoors. We saw what happened in the 3000 meters yesterday. So combining that with some of the guys in the 1500 meters that we saw today, listen, this is going to be a crazy outdoor season. So huge shout out to all these guys in the 1500 meters. On the women's side, I mean, is, was this even more crazy? We saw Hailu from Ethiopia. She was able to actually get the win in the last 100 meters as well. I mean, I don't know. Everyone just seems to be turning up in that last 100 meters, slingshotting off the curve. But Hailu managed to get the win, representing for Ethiopia. I mean, the Ethiopian contingent was very, very strong at these championships. But just behind Hailu, Nikki Hiltz, silver medal in 4 minutes, 2.32 seconds. A huge personal best for Nikki Hiltz. I mean, they actually said that this morning they woke up with a cold, with a sore throat, but they were like, yo, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to leave that all behind that allowed them to focus in and just go for the silver medal now they actually said that they were kind of you know manifesting bronze listen silver medal just as sweet if not better Nikki Hiltz is a force to be reckoned with and has really been improving everything throughout the indoor season very excited for the outdoor season but in the bronze medal position. Emily Mackey, bronze medal in another personal best for her as well. Four minutes, 2.69 seconds. Now, Mackey was actually leading the race for a significant amount of time. She made a huge move, chose to take the lead. Yesterday, she actually said that um, she wanted to go for the American record. Listen, she was doing it here. And again, she got the bronze medal in her young, young career. I mean, this was an amazing race, just like the men's 1500 meters. I am really looking forward to seeing, you know, how everything is gonna play out over the next couple weeks as we start into the outdoor season these, these 1500 meters were very very strong but let's move over to the men's 800 meters where we've been talking about how this event has kind of been in a down period especially for the united states who hasn't won any medals specifically outdoors since what 2019 and sometimes hadn't even made finals outdoors but bryce hopple who had gotten onto the podium in 2022 stepped it up big time gold medal here in one minute 44.92 seconds for a world lead i mean bryce hoppel was talking about he wanted to get the gold medal he wanted to be in the conversation for you know one of the strong 800 meter runners in the world right now not only just in the united states but in the world right now and this performance proved it we saw all throughout the rounds that bryce hoppel was looking very very good very very comfortable this was exactly what it was, but it wasn't that easy. Just in the last, I'm, listen, I'm telling you, everyone just seems to be holding it off for the end, but Bryce Hopple, he edged out the gold, not edged out, but very comfortably in that last 50 meters, got the gold medal. Huge shout out to Bryce Hopple. If, if anything, irrelevant of the time, this is going to be huge motivation going outdoors. Don't forget that in 2019, when Donovan Brazier won the gold medal, Bryce Hopple got fourth place. And that was coming off his amazing career in the NCAA where he was running, I don't even know, it seems like a thousand races from cross country to indoors all the way to outdoors. So he has that potential to get on the podium. He clearly shows that he has a potential to be a gold medalist. And considering the 800 meters is essentially pretty wide open, Bryce Hopple could be an Olympic champion outdoors this year. Who knows? Who knows? But keep a lookout for Bryce Hopple. I'm super excited to see how things pan out. Now let's move over to the women's 800 meters where we did see Dugma from Ethiopia. Got the gold medal here just over Gemma Riki. Actually just surpassed Gemma Riki again in the home straight. Riki came up for silver and then we did see Yarigo get the bronze medal. So Huge shout outs to all the women in the 800. Another, I mean, all these races were amazing across the board, 1500, 800, and then of course yesterday with the 3000s. But let's drop down. It's kind of crazy. I'm actually gonna talk about a world record at this point in the, in the recap, but 
world record for the day, Devin Charlton in the hurdles, representing Bahamas, 7.65 seconds, improves on her previous world record that she set at Milrose Games, running 7.67. Listen, Devin Charlton showed up and showed out. She got the silver medal two years ago in uh, Belgrade, Serbia, and now she got the gold medal. This is the first gold medal that the Bahamas has ever won in the 60 meter hurdles. I mean, Devin Charlton is a huge representative for her country, and she is showing that she can be a gold medalist outdoors. The women's 100 meter hurdles is going to be super competitive, but Devin Charlton is putting a stamp on the event right now. She actually said that, you know, she was kind of, she didn't want to share the world record. So remember, 7.67, she broke that. And then Tia Jones at the USA Indoor Championships tied that. So Devin Charlton, she surpassed that. She got it on, all to her own. We're going to see how the women's hurdles plays out outdoors. <laughs> Shout out to Devin Charlton and all that she's doing. But moving over, men's 4x4. Now, men's and women's 4x4s, this, this, these were some crazy races. First off, early in the day, we saw some rumblings that Noah Lyles was warming up, but you thought he was going to run the 4x4 um, in the heats, but then, you know, didn't actually run in the heats. Nothing was confirmed. Then midday, all of a sudden, we get an announcement. Noah Lyles puts up the bat signal. Hey, he said that he was called for the 4x4. Guess what? Showed up on the track. Noah Lyles is going to be running third leg on the 4x4. And yo, he delivered along with the others, Ja'Cory Patterson, passed off to Matthew Bowling, passed off to Noel Lyles, passed off to um, Christopher Bailey, but they got the silver medal just behind Belgium who managed to get the gold medal. And we, we did see um, Doom who won the gold medal in the 400 meters. He essentially did the same thing just in the last couple meters, you know, edged out the United States for the gold medal there, but USA did get silver and shout out to Noel Lyles. He said that he wants to go for, you know, four gold medals at the Paris Olympics. The four by four is what he wants to do. And he showed up here, he split four 45.68 seconds. I mean, considering that he hasn't run a 400 since what, high school? Last year at Florida Relays, I think he ran a four by four and maybe split 47 seconds. 45.6 indoors is actually really good. Who knows? I mean, if no allows, he's been talking about he could split 43 seconds. We gotta see it to believe it, but he very likely can split 44 seconds, right? This is a good indication of what's possible. Now, I don't know if he's gonna get four gold medals, but at least he's putting a stamp on, on the event. Now, we did see some controversy where Fred Curley was tweeting out saying, like, yo, why is it that Noah Laws gets to run when I've been, you know, asking to run on the 4x4 since, you know, 2021? And, yo, Fred Curley is a world championship medalist, bronze medal in 2019 in the 400 meter dash. Of course, he's a world champion um, in 2022 in the 100 meter dash, as well as Olympic silver medalist in the 100. So he's been able to straddle across the 100, 200, and 4x4. But listen, I, I want to see how this plays out. Noah Laws said, like, yo, Fred Curley should have showed up. But this is going to play out very, very nicely. But overall, though, I'm super excited to see what Noah Lyles is going to be able to do, hopefully outdoors. Do y'all think that Noah Lyles should be running, running on the 4x4? I mean, or do you think we should stick to just 400 meter runners? I don't know. I don't know. But this definitely gives him a good case to potentially be in that pool. So amazing race from Noah Lyles and amazing race from all the guys. Again, Ja'Cory Patterson, Matthew Bowling, Noah Lyles, and Chris Bailey all threw down amazing performances. And shout out to Trevor Bassett and Paul Dedowo who managed to run in the 4x4 heat. So definitely huge shout out to all the guys on the 4x4. On the women's side, I mean, this was Netherlands' show. Actually, it was kind of a little spicy in the last lap. I mean, Netherlands going up against the United States and going up against Great Britain. Great Britain got the bronze medal. A huge shout out to them. But the United States, they were holding their own throughout the entire race where we thought that the Netherlands would kind of be, you know, far out. They had Leaky Claver, they had Femke Bull, but, you know, uh, on the last lap, Femke Bull got the baton just ahead of Alexis Holmes. And this was kind of a replay of the mixed 4x4 that we saw in Budapest last year. And actually speaking to Alexis Holmes, she actually said that she literally had a flashback of that moment when she got the baton, you know, thinking back like, oh crap, this is going to be Budapest once again. But Femke Bowl, Femke Bowl kind of runs like she's not even running. Like she looks so smooth, so relaxed, not even sprinting, but she comfortably got the gold medal here in the 4x4 for the Netherlands. And then the United States, they came up for second place, getting the silver medal. Huge shout outs to all these women. Uh, who was it? Cornera Hayes. We had Talitha Diggs, uh, Bailey Lear, as well as Alexis Holmes. All four of them coming together to get the silver medal for the United States. But huge shout out to Femke Bull as well. She managed to run five races throughout this entire weekend, three rounds of the 400 and then two rounds of the 500. I mean, someone was saying, com kind of comparing Femke Bull and Sydney McLaughlin Leroni, where, you know, Sydney, she chooses her races wisely. She doesn't run as frequently, which is perfectly fine, right? Do what you need to do to succeed. But then Femke Bull runs seven races, which it might be as many races as Sydney McLaughlin Leroni runs, you know, throughout the year. But regardless, I'm excited to see what Femke Bull and Sydney McLaughlin Leroni are gonna do outdoors in the 400 meter hurdles. But huge shout outs to Femke Bull. Set a world record yesterday. Um, she, yeah, she 
is killing it. She is killing it. Now, over to the field events where the women's long jump continued that amazing dominance that we saw from the United States, Tara Davis Woodhall. She performed, she pulled up, she showed out, she did everything here in the long jump. Gold medal in 7.07 meters. This is her first gold medal at a world championships or Olympic games. She's shown that she's had that talent. She had the potential, right? She's dealt with some ups and downs um, really throughout her entire career between switching schools, right? Uh, between some injuries, between some, you know, having to sit out, all these kind of setbacks that she's had to deal with, but things are finally coming together. Got a medal at the Bud Budapest World Championships last year, but now she upgraded it to gold. And she jumped seven meters um, twice in this competition, just like she did at the USA Indoor Championships. So Tara Davis is getting very, very comfortable in the seven meter range. And I think she is pretty much the favorite as we go into the Olympic season. Now, a lot of women are gonna be stepping things up, right? You have Maleki Mihambo, uh, the previous Olympic champion who seems to be coming back from injury, but Tara Davis is a favorite for the Olympic gold right now. And that's amazing to say, again, considering all the setbacks and all the ups and downs that she had. But just behind her, she was actually trading wins, trading the lead early on with Monet Nichols. Again, from the United States, Monet Nichols got the silver medal here. This is Monet Nichols' first ever world championship. Not even world championship final, but world championship. She just came out of Texas Tech um, a couple years back. She had jumped 6.9 meters outdoors, um, but she had some setbacks. She had some ups and downs as well. And, you know, she pretty much wasn't on many people's radars, but she managed to get a silver medal here. So shout out to Tara Davis Woodhouse. Shout out to Monet Nichols. Amazing performances both in those long jumps. Now on the women's triple jump, we saw this this morning. I have to give an amazing shout out to Thea Lafon from Dominica, the only athlete representing her country here at the World Championships. She came out and got the gold medal in 15.01 meters. Not only did she break 15 meters for the first time in her career, but she got her country's first ever gold medal in any event, in any World Championships, in any Olympics. The country of Dominica has never gotten a gold medal at the Olympic Games, the World Championships, World Indoor Championships, never gotten a gold medal. So for Thea Lafon to represent for a country, to break the 15 meter barrier, huge performance and huge shout outs to Thea Lafon. Now, on the men's pole vault, this was another Mondo show. Mondo, but he kept us on edge. I mean, he got the win in 6.05 meters. He attempted the world record of 6.24, wasn't able to get it. But dropping back to 5.85 meters, Mondo actually had two misses. And listen, he was keeping everyone on edge. Everyone in the, in the stadium was like, oh crap, like Mondo might lose this. And he was sitting down, he was preparing, he's mentally preparing. The clock was ticking down. He just got up jumped the height and then went on with his day. Mondo turned into Mondo and he showed why he is the greatest pole vaulter in the world. Got the gold medal again. Another gold medal for him. Just behind him, we did see Sam Kendricks get the silver. Really strong performance and huge shout out to Sam Kendricks. This is his first medal since the 2019 World Championships in Doha. So he's had, again, also a lot of athletes having ups and downs and performing and showing up here. Don't forget that Sam Kendricks at the Tokyo Olympics, he had uh, caught COVID, so he wasn't able to compete there, right? He had some, wasn't able to, you know, do well in 2022, 2023, but now to get back on the podium, this is an amazing performance for Sam Kendricks in that pole vault. But ending off with the men's high jump, this is where Hamish Kerr representing New Zealand. This was one of the greatest uh, performances, at least in terms of the atmosphere in the stadium that we saw this weekend. Got the win in 2.36 meters, a personal best representing for New Zealand. I mean, New Zealand has ha been having an amazing championships this whole weekend. So Kerr really dominating for uh, his country here. Just behind him, Shelby McEwen for the United States, his first time on the podium. Shelby has been coming to the world championships for so many years, but he got his first ever medal, silver medal here in the high jump, and he just edged out Wu for the bronze medal. Huge shout outs to all the guys in the high jump. I mean, huge shout outs to everyone at these 2024 World Indoor Championships. I mean, what, we saw two world records, multiple championship records, multiple national records. I mean, everyone showed up and showed out. I don't know, people are gonna go back in history and see if this was one of the greatest you know, world championships, at least for the United States. Again, the United States kind of cleaned house. They did amazing here. But let us know what your favorite performance from these championships were. We really appreciate y'all tuning in for the entire weekend. Go check out all the interviews on the City Mag YouTube channel. Go check out all the content on Instagram. I mean, you know, we really appreciate all y'all for you know, just showing up and showing out. So we're gonna be at the NCAA championships next weekend, just in a couple days. So be sure to keep tuning in and thanks for watching y'all.